Hi everyone, my name is Adrian and I'm here with Next Action Associates to discuss today the topic of balancing out or balancing well-being with high performance. And the reason why I'm addressing this, this very topic is, first of all, I'm personally highly interested in it and how to balance things out. Second of all, my clients keep asking myself, how do you balance wanting to work with having kids all the time? So it's, it's clearly a topic. So let's address it. And I think the first thing I want to say here is that what I did at the beginning is already the biggest problem, I believe, in terms of how we frame balancing well-being in high performance. You see, when we when we address this topic by balancing well, uh, well-being and performance, I don't know about you, but my image, what I have is two things that are like that. And if one is is heavier, right? It will pull the other up or down, right? And somehow you need to find the right spot where they're both balanced. But what it tells my brain automatically is the moment I do lots of work, the moment I do an all nighter, I get guilt feelings because it somehow means that I'm out of balance. But does it really? You see here at GTD, we're always interested, not so much in whether or not you're working or not working or how much you're working. We actually don't care. What we really care about for you and for ourselves is whether or not we're appropriately engaged. So if you're doing it all lighter and that's the exact thing you should be doing, then you're being highly productive if you're focused on what you're doing, if you're progressing as you'd like to progress, and if you're actually coming closer to your desired outcome then you're being productive. Now, what interests us also is, is doing an all-nighter, something that happens here and there, every once in a while, and is the appropriate thing? Or do you notice that because you're pulling all-nighters, you also are not getting other things done? Then we need to have a conversation, right? Because what we're looking after is that you have healthy high performance in a sustainable manner. Now, I, I know for myself that if I pull an all-nighter once, then I'm all good. If this becomes my new habit, if I just pull in more hours just to get somehow a few things done, then something's not working. You see here, we're talking about healthy, high performance that is sustainable over time. So let me reframe this notion of balancing well, well-being and high performance because to my brain again that means i need to choose i need to choose between performing on a high level or having well-being which i believe is is simply wrong we don't have to choose you don't have to choose you can have both you can feel that you're progressing on a very high level that you're performing to very high standards while still feeling that your well-being is kept under check and I would even argue, and I think it has been argued much better than I would by the two authors of this book, David Allen and Ed Lamont, that you can't really have healthy high performance, sustainable high performance, if you don't have a very, very high focus on your well-being, if well-being is not part of who you are and how you operate. So how can you actually not balance well-being and high performance, but really experience that you can have both well-being and high performance at all times. And what I'm giving you today in terms of the GTD methodology is, as always, first off, a repetition of the basic principles because they're always there. They're always working in the background and I don't care how many times you've heard them, repeating them always helps. The first thing you need to do at all times if you're feeling out of balance or out of control, let's say, is to look at what is in your mind right now, what's bouncing in your head and pull it out. Your mind is for having ideas, not for holding them. So write them down on a piece of paper. For every single item you have on that piece of paper, you will make a decision whether or not you're gonna do something. And if you do something, then what exactly? How does it look like? Next action thinking is what, you're, what we're pushing here for. Having a next action is wonderful. But for most of the things you have on, a paper, on, on this piece of paper, you'll see that with that next action, you're not done. There will be something else coming forward, right? 
What exactly? A desired outcome. You will need to identify exactly what's my mark? When, when am I done? How do I know that I'm actually done? If I'm running a marathon and I don't have a finishing line, then it's very frustrating to run because you're all the time asking yourself, am I at, at what kilometer am I right now? Number three, number four, number 30, I have no clue if you don't know exactly where your desired outcome is. So make sure that you identify desired outcome. And I insist on that because I'm coming back to that notion of desired outcome in a minute. Once you have the next action, the desired outcome, you need to organize all that stuff in a meaningful way. Now that would take very long to organize it all right now. So let me cut to the chase, organize it in a meaningful way for you, right? Get lists, put them in the lists. Now you're ready to review those, which I think is the most crucial component when it comes to having high performance and well-being is to not just have built the system, is to actually use the system, review it on a regular basis. It's, it's just like having a watch. Having a watch and not looking at it doesn't make any sense, right? So you've, you have lists with actions, you have a list with desired outcomes, you need to use those now. And then you will decide every moment of the day, what will I do using that system? Okay, so these are the basic principles, the five steps of the GTD workflow. And now I wanna focus if you've done all these steps on one specific aspect that can help you to, in your terms, balance high performance and well-being, and maybe if we reframe it, just not balance, but feel in control regarding high performance and well-being simultaneously. And that is the projects list. What's a project? The definition is any desired outcome that you want to reach that requires more than one step between now and a year, approximately. And I just ask you to identify for every single next action that you have, what's the desired outcome? That's a different type of thinking, right? You have next action thinking and desired outcome thinking. And des desired outcome thinking is essential for multiple reasons. The number one reason I wanna give you is that whenever you need to focus on what is appropriate, remember what I said before, right? We're looking for appropriate engagement. And whenever you want to know whether or not what you're doing is the appropriate thing, should I rest right now or should I do an all-nighter? Should I spend time with my kids right now or should I, should I go for a run? Should I just do these emails right for the next 10 minutes or should I brainstorm on that topic? Right? Whenever you need to make choices all the time, then having a clear list of clear identified desired outcomes is super helpful. That will help you to not just do stuff, you know, like feel busy, you will actually focus on the things that matter to you, the things that are actually important that move the needle, okay? That's the number one reason why you need a list of desired outcomes. Most people have to-do list. Some people have next actions list, which is better than a to-do list, right? Very few people have a projects list. That's where there's so much gold to mine, guaranteed. It took me years to understand what the projects list is for. This is where it comes together, all right? Balance. The next aspect that the project list can give you is a wonderful, let's say, yeah, decision help tool <laughs> before you say yes. Right, that moment when someone comes and asks you for something that you actually want to do, like this cool project you could actually do, like go in the bushes out for a week, lovely, cool idea to just go off for a week. Should I do it, yes or no? or that project that you really don't wanna do <laughs> that comes at you and you're like, should I do it, yes or no? Either way, it doesn't really matter. There is an, appro an appropriate response to it, right? There is the actual good answer for you, not for me, for you, on that project that is coming your way. How do you know if you make a good choice or not? You refer back to the projects list. Your brain just cannot in that moment, and it happened again, a while ago, I had this invitation just for a dinner, not a big project, just a dinner. And I really wanted to go. And so I said automatically, yes, of course. An hour later, when I reviewed my projects, I was like, why did I say yes? I'm overcommitted again, right? Just stopping, looking at that projects list before you say yes or no, to review what you already said yes to will help your brain, basically, will help you to notice 
that you already said yes to 70 things, that you're actually quite cramped and that there's no more room for anything else. Or, and here comes number three, you need to actually renegotiate it. You need to actually look at it and say, you know what, it's so important. I want to do that week in the bushes. Or that project I really don't want to do is actually so important for my boss or for my family or for whomever, and I really do need to take it. What else should I put to the side before I say yes to, right? So before you say yes, review the place that's called desire.com or the projects list. And last but not least, it will form and train you in outcome thinking. What do I mean by that? Most people I coach when I work with them have a pretty well tuned ability to identify outputs. So I ask them, okay, what's your desired outcome? And they're like, give the presentation. Now it's not wrong. You can say that give the presentation is an actual outcome. It's true. But if you really hone it down, you'll see that this is more of an output, right? The delivery of a presentation is more of an output. If, if I challenge my clients on, on that particular output, I often get something like that. Hmm. You know what? My outcome is actually not to just deliver the presentation. My outcome is that people are positively impacted by my presentation or is to help move the decision in the right direction through my presentation or it is to motivate people through my presentation or I actually want to really have fun while delivering my presentation. Now you're thinking more in terms of outcomes. Now, what does that do? What, why is outcome thinking helpful, needed more in this world? Well, because when I hear people tell me that they feel busy all the time, that they're doing a lot of stuff, they're not on Instagram or on, on, on Netflix or whatever, they're working, they're doing stuff that are actually moving needles, just not theirs, <laughs> right? That's why they feel that they're busy. And if I, if I hear that, it's because I, I believe more and more that they have an input input thinking mind, mindset, that, that is correct. Input mindset, which is looking at what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And it's like doing, 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 doing all the time. But really, why am I doing this stuff? And where is it going? The more, the clearer you are on the outcomes you want to get, the more precise your actions will gear you towards those outcomes. And you won't feel that you're busy. You will feel suddenly that you're much more productive. Now, having that outcome mindset is such an essential component when you're in a team when you're in a team environment, because this is specifically where ambiguity and volume can um, produce difficulties for your team to actually work together. All right. So I hope that helps. And I do want to challenge you right now to actually go out of here and not just be like, OK, that was interesting or, or, or not. interesting. <laughs> I want you to get something out of it, something very concrete. And as always with me, there is a direct action you need to do coming out of this video. Don't just look at it, do something with it. And my challenge to you is to actually look at your calendar. You're maybe going into the holidays, maybe not, I don't know, but look at like, like for two, two months, three months, something like that. Look out into the future and identify for everything that you see in your calendar that will grab your attention. Ask yourself, not what do I need to do? Ask yourself, what's the desired outcome here? And make a note of a desired outcome that actually triggers your imagination, your creativity, your motivation. Look for not just an output, look please for an outcome. And do that for the next two months, six months, and, and you'll have a basic list. If not already, you will have a basic list of what we call a projects list. And Just play with it. Just actually look at it and play with it to Redo that list before you make any kind of decision. And you'll see, you'll start to notice how powerful it can be to have in one place just an index of all your projects that can help you to navigate the complexity, the ambiguity in which we actually live that is increasing and not so much reducing. I really hope it helps. I wish you a wonderful month of July and I see you soon in another video.